Good morning, it's Edna Keep here. Welcome back. Uh, so today we're, uh, we're going to be talking about Throwback Thursday. Uh, Shandell wanted me to share with you some, some of the challenges we had when we were first starting uh, and how we got from zero doors in, well, our own house, I guess I should say, in 2007 to uh, 437 doors today. So basically, uh, I, as a financial advisor, which I, I, I did for about 20 years, um, all, my, all my assets were tied up in mutual funds. I mean, we owned our own house. Uh, we didn't really pay attention to what it was doing, going up or going down or anything like that. And, uh, and so I sold mutual funds and I invested in mutual funds and we had a lot of money invested in mutual funds. And at the end of 2006, we were in a pretty good place. But in 2007, uh, the market tar started to drop again. And uh, one thing, you know, in mutual funds is people don't like to buy in a down market. They like it to be more uh, solid when they buy and, 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 and it goes against the grain. Um, and I had a lot of people in monthly plans, so it, 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 uh, it still, I still had some passive income coming in. But uh, it dropped, and, and, and when, when it goes down like that, a lot of people didn't want to buy. Uh, we and our money was going down, so uh, it, it just bothered us. And we thought that we should look at another way to start making money. So we started looking around, and, and actually it was one of my clients that came into my office one day and told me that they'd been taking some real estate classes uh, through the Rich Dad group. And, and actually at the time it was actually Russ Whitney out of the US. And uh, uh, they, they said that they decided to buy two houses. They did two flip houses. And uh, they said, you know, if you go to the classes, just know they're gonna upsell you on education. So just when you go, don't even take your wallet and, and then you have an excuse not to buy and all that kind of stuff. But we went uh, and it was a free event, a three, three, three hour event. And when it was done, it, it interested us. So they sold us on a three day weekend in Saskatoon, um, just a few weekends out and we bought that. So I think it was like a thousand bucks for the two of us. So we thought, well, that's easy enough to spend. Uh, we could probably spend that shopping if we didn't go. So we went and it was life changing. It really opened our eyes to what was possible in real estate. We had no idea up till then what was possible. And uh, he, they basically gave you an overview of what you could do and at, at there, there you could decide if it was something you wanted to pursue. Well, they took each of us outside of the room and asked us at the end uh, what our goals were for real estate. And you know, we decided based on what we'd heard that we wanted to have 50 doors in five years. Because if you could get $100 a month in cash flow per door, if we had 50 doors, we'd be making 5,000 a month, which we thought because we had no intention of leaving our work. Uh, we both really liked what we did. Uh, we thought, well, that would be a really nice uh, buffer for us. And so uh, we, he, they said to us, well, you realize if you want to get 50 doors in five years that you're probably going to have to spend some money on your education. So they presented it to us and they gave us, asked us what we were interested in and we told them. And that was five classes for us to take. And each class was a three-day weekend. And uh, they didn't have all, all webinar-based stuff uh, back then. It was a little, a little tougher. Um, we did have, we did decide to uh, hire a phone coach, but uh, that was like a six or eight week program. I can't remember exactly, but at the time when we decided that we were going to take the education, the cost was $27,000 US. And I remember at the time Warren and I, uh, we, we, they let us go and talk about it ourselves. And basically it came down to the question, you know, because we knew it was a lot of money and, and when you're not 100% committed to yourself, it, 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 it's a lot. But we decided we were going to commit and because we, we had been introduced to a couple who had taken the classes a couple years before and were doing really good. They had like 40 houses. And, and uh, then we talked about the couple who had not taken the classes and had done two fix and flips and decided it wasn't for them because they both had government jobs and uh, it, it was so hard. They had two young kids, they worked evenings and weekends and it was really like just doing another job and they hated it and they didn't make enough money on their fix and flip to make it worth their while and so they quit. 
we didn't want to be that person. We wanted to be one who could build it long term uh, and like the couple uh, that we'd heard that had taken the classes. So we decided with a lot of scare, uh, fear I should say, that um, we were gonna bite the bullet and take the classes. Well, you know what? We spent a lot of time and a lot of money that year. We went, we traveled Edmonton, Calgary, Toronto, Florida, Vancouver for all our different classes. I think back to Calgary twice because <coughs> there was something there too. And you know what? We loved it. We got to network with other uh, real estate investors and uh, got to know them and, and got to, you know, understand their fears. And, and there was people in there who um, were experienced, had been doing it for quite a few years. And I still remember being regaled by these uh, tenant tales uh, at dinner one night by this um, couple of uh, Italian guys. They were, they were so fun and funny. And they were telling us about this fellow who'd moved into their property and they couldn't get him out. And uh, they'd, <laughs> they'd already taken, uh, one, one of the guys had went in and threatened him and the guy took him to court or whatever they do. And anyway, he got in trouble. And so they were scared to do anything more to him, but he was still living in their property and it had been like six months. And he, and then the last straw was, is he started stealing GST checks from the other tenants in the area. And they went, you know what, to hell with it. Even if we go to jail, we're getting that guy out. So they went and they they knocked on the door and they got in, uh, or, they, or actually I think they let themselves in and that's illegal. And they the guy was sleeping on the couch and he said, uh, I grabbed this frying pan and I just whacked him upside the head and I said, get the hell out of my house right now. And he goes, I'm calling the cops, I'm calling the cops. He says, you go right ahead because tonight one of us is going to jail and I'm not sure who it's gonna be. So he kicked him out and uh, and then he just sat in his chair and he waited. And sure enough, the cops showed up and uh, he said, uh, yeah, this guy's banging on my door and banging on my door. Honestly, I think he's on drugs. And I, I think that was something they determined he was on drugs. He says, because he's acting like he lives here, but he doesn't. And he says, I, I think you should take him away. So the cops loaded him up and took him away. So in, anyway, it, it ended up working out good because they just pretended it was like their property. They didn't know this guy. And I, I just laughed and laughed. And I thought, you know what? If we ever had a really bad tenant, we would uh, do the same thing. <laughs> Anyway, that, that was just a funny story we heard. But we met a lot of people who were doing really well in real estate and making a lot of money and building their wealth. And, and we just went for it. So it, the funny thing was, is we ended up meeting the couple that we'd been told about at one of the networking events that our mentor had set up. And we ended up partnering with them because you know what? We were still scared. We, we had by this time had bought two properties of our own. And the first two properties we bought were, were from the equity of our own home. Uh, we also spent our um, uh, some of our uh, money on the education classes because we had put it on our credit card, but we didn't want to be paying the high interest. So we used the money from, from our home to do that. And uh, we bought two con condos. And I still remember walking up to those condos with our realtor and he was telling us that a bunch of condos in this one unit that used to be apartments were gonna be sold as, off as condos. And uh, I said to him, is that one for sale? And he said, yes. And I said, oh my God, my daughter just moved in there and she's renting it. I will buy that one. Cause then I know I got a good tenant, right? I always knew that she paid her rent on time. That's, a, that's how she was brought up. I, I never missed a rent payment in my entire life. I uh, knew she wouldn't either. And so we, we bought our first condo, scared to death of tenants, of finding tenants, and got my daughter as a tenant. And then <clears throat> in the meantime, they had, she had got to know her neighbors, and they had lived in the same apartment building dwelling for 17 years. Uh, they were a couple maybe at the time in their 40s, or late 30s, early 40s, so they've been living together a long time there. And I thought, well, you know what? I'll buy that one too, because if that tenant's been there for 17 years, they're not going anywhere. So we bought that one too. Well, as it turned out, uh, shortly after that, I think uh, within about four months, 
they decided they were going to buy their own condo. They said they'd seen the prices of them go from when they got their first chance to buy them years ago to where they were now, and they couldn't believe it, and they weren't going to take that chance again. So they bought their own condo, and there we were with a vacancy. But as it was, we posted it on, um, I believe, just on Kijiji. And before they moved out, we had a new tenant move in. And it was a very good tenant, too. It was an older fellow with a mentally handicapped daughter. And, you know, they took great great care of the place it looked uh, just as nice when they moved out and and then of course from there it was just just got easier and easier to get good tenants and uh, so so that was our start um, now the the exciting part of our start is we knew that we were gonna have to learn how to raise money if we were gonna grow the way we wanted to and we partnered with the other couple and they were already raising money uh, and had different joint ventures on the go. So when we partnered with them, uh, we, we at the time were able to get a lot of mortgages in our name. So what we would do is we would put the mortgages on, in our name, they would raise the money, and then we, we would split it. Uh, um, uh, I think what we did is we gave the investor... 50% and then we split the other half 25-25 uh, and so it worked really good and they managed it so we didn't have to worry about um, <clears throat> working with tenants and stuff like that <clears throat> excuse me because it was still um, we still didn't want to do that because we were busy with our own work and 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 plus as a financial advisor I also couldn't raise money yet <clears throat> then about um, a year, just over a year of working together, uh, I was in talking to a um, realtor, and he said, and by this time, we had bought a house uh, with none of our own money, which was so cool. And uh, I, I've told this story, but I'm going to tell it again, just because there's some new people on here. Um, so we we uh, dealt with this lady. We'd been told that there was a new house in, in the area that, that uh, my daughter used to own a house, and we went by and looked, and it wasn't a new house. But they put new siding on it, so it looked new. It was a 1950s house. We negotiated with her, starting at 140, and went to 150, and then eventually bought it for 160,000. Now we probably overpaid a bit. There's no doubt about that because I think five years later, four years later, we had an appraisal, and it was worth 163,000. But you know what? Uh, we got the mortgage on it. We got 128,000 mortgage at I don't know. It was less than three percent. All I know is our payments were less than four hundred dollars, and taxes were fifty, and insurance was fifty. So our payment, whole payment costs on that house were less than five hundred. We rented the upstairs for twelve hundred. So uh, that was seven hundred cash flow on the upstairs. Then we rented the downstairs for another five hundred. Uh, and and it, it was great. They had shared laundry. I mean, it wasn't a perfect house. Uh, There's no garage. Uh, grass looked like crap. But you know what? Tenants are, are used to living in that. And so we cash flowed that property around $1,000 a month. We still own that property to this day. And the key was that we got it with none of our own money. So therein lies the value if you think about that. If you could get a property with none of your own money and, and even if you overpay for it a little bit, the the seller was so happy because she got full price for her property plus she was going to get 6% interest on her money which was the $32,000 uh, that we needed for the down payment. And we paid that monthly for, I don't know, two or three years. I think it was $160. Uh, so still after that we were cash flowing over $1,000, right? And, um, uh, and then at one point she needed some extra money because uh, of her mom. So we, we just paid her off. By that time we had been making some money, so we just paid her off. And, uh, and yeah, we still own it today. So if you think about that, we've owned that property for eight years. Cash loaded approximately a 1000 a month since we've owned it. And right now I think we do have the upstairs vacant. So, But eight years, that's uh, $96,000. So do we care that we overpaid for it a little bit? Not at all. It's still a great property. We love it. Um, it brings in good money. It always pays for itself. Even with the downstairs rented right now, which I think is at seven hundred. Well, that takes care of all the payments, and we've got uh, and uh, we've got some cash left over because we are paying the utilities upstairs. So uh, that that is is kind of how we got our start. Now our first apartment building. This is such a cool story. Um, I had a, uh, approached a realtor. And I, I told him what we were doing, and he said, well, Edna, why don't you buy an apartment building? And I said, well, I can't. 
I said, I don't even have 10 houses, you know, he, and, and at the time I think, I can't remember how many we had, but anyway, he, I, that was always our thought is we had to start with houses, build up our, the amount of houses we had before we could get into the apartment building world. And he said, no, that's not true. Edna. he says, you, you guys have a decent net worth. You have good income. He says, you won't have any problem qualifying for a mortgage for, for, uh, uh, apartment building. Plus they look at apartment buildings different because it's based on the income that they, uh, that they make themselves. And I said, well, okay, you convinced me. Um, what do you got? And he says, well, I do have a 24 unit for sale. Uh, and he says it's in a good area. And he says there, there's even an opportunity for you to condo convert that. Because there's a lot of, at, right at that point, there was a lot of apartments being converted into condos and sold as individual units. So we thought, wow, that's just going to be awesome. So he said, told us how much it was. I can't remember the total price, but it worked out to $75,000 a door. And, and he said, you're probably going to have to give them full price to make it uh, worthwhile. Or it was a little bit less than full price. Uh, I said, okay, uh, write up the offer. And he says, uh, well, do you want to go look at it? And I said, okay. So I went and drove by it. I couldn't get into it at the time, but I, I drove by it. I said, let's just get it under contract. And uh, I drove by it. By the time I got back to the realtor office, he had the paperwork done. We signed it put in the offer and got it accepted. Sorry about that, my dog wanted out of the, the room. Uh, anyway, so we got the offer accepted and uh, I remember when we were talking to different people at the time, it was like, wow, $75,000 a door. Do you know like five years ago, those properties were selling like 20,000 a door? And, you know, and that scared us again. We're thinking, oh my God, what are we doing? Are we overpaying? Uh, then we started working on the financing and we we're trying to get vendor financing. They didn't want to give it to us. And we started working with this group um, out of the States. We'd met through a mortgage broker and we were working on the financing. And what we realized is we could only get 50% financing because um, the rents were so low. Because the, the guys, the, the rent they had on average, there was $425. And they, of course, had owned it for years and years. They had a lot of good tenants in there and they didn't want to lose them. So they were scared that if they gave us a vendor take back and we went in and started raising rents, that we'd lose all the tenants. They'd all move out and we'd be screwed. Well, we, we'd got to meet people now. We knew rents were way, way too low. So we went and we, uh, and again, I couldn't raise money then. So I did have a few family members I approached that invested with us. And uh, our partner who, who they had been gone to Vegas when we made the offer. And when they came back, we quickly said, like, can you come over before you even go home? And they came over and we said, well, if we bought an apartment building, would you guys partner with us? Because we knew we needed property management. We had never done property management. We didn't even want to take this on by ourselves. We were scared. And they said, oh, absolutely. This is so funny because we were in Vegas. We were making goals and we were saying, this year, we want to get 50 doors, which was more than they already had. Well, this one building made them halfway there so they were beyond excited to partner with us on it and we were beyond excited to have them because we knew they could raise capital and um and i really couldn't so i did raise a bit they raised most of it and we took possession of the building we got a hard money loan which was like at 12 percent, i think from a lawyer out of vancouver uh, i think for like four hundred thousand dollars and we got uh we did end up getting a vendor take back and, and how that ended up happening is we got all the way to the end uh, of get, supposed to be getting financing from this one lender in the U.S. And they were telling us every day, yeah, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. So we kept putting the seller off. And then that was right at the collapse of the, of the market in the U.S. So they ended up going out of business at one point. We couldn't even reach them. And we were like, again, terrified because we'd put deposits on this building, on non-refundable deposits. And we thought, oh my God, we're going to lose all our money. But we went and talked to the sellers again, told them what had happened, said we can't even reach our lender. And, and can you give us some time to work on it? And so again, we had to put another 30,000 non-refundable deposit uh, as kind of a good faith thing. And we went to another lender and then we got, we finally got a finance, but like I said, only at 50%. So we had to raise a lot of money and, but you know what, that apartment uh, now, 
uh, and and we don't um, we don't have ownership anymore. Uh, I had sold a couple units out as condos to good clients of mine. They still own them. They're happy with them. Uh, but we broke up our partnership with a couple who uh, who we were we were with. And I'll tell you that story another time. All about uh, proper agreements. Just so you know, we didn't have one. And. Uh, so they we we sold our our half out to them and they they brought in some new partners and uh and I believe their last condos that they've been selling out of there at 160,000 so just to give you an idea we paid $75,000 a door for that place and they were selling those condo units I know when we first sold them it was 140 142 I think and then now they're selling at 160. So it was a it was a good good deal for us. Although if we were to start over again today, we would have just kept it and not had it as sold them as condos because at seventy five thousand dollars a door, uh, right now same similar buildings, uh, we're paying one hundred and twenty five a door uh, and keeping it as long term rental. So we we should have just kept it. But ah, that's hindsight, right? Um, it, it worked out uh, okay. Uh, uh, our partners ended up with it. We didn't. But that was our very first apartment building. Again, this time I did put in money. Uh, I had cashed in. Uh, actually, I didn't cash in an RSP. But we had quite a bit of money in RSPs. And we found at one of our classes that there was a group out of BC that would loan you whatever you had in RSPs if you kept their RSPs in these specific bonds that they sold you, which was supposed to pay us like four and a half percent. And then they would loan you whatever at, um, in cash. You could use it for whatever you wanted and we chose to use it on the apartment building. And we were able to pull $200,000 out of our RSPs. Now we had to pay eight and a half and nine percent interest on it. And um, we, we actually held those loans for 10 years. There was a bunch of challenges with that. And, or actually, I guess it was nine years. It would have been 10 years next year in 2017. But uh, we had to cash out early. There was the CRA got involved. They thought they, it wasn't a, they didn't like it. They didn't like the way it was set up. They did allow us to keep it in, in RSPs. And just recently, we paid that out. Uh, but very shortly after we owned the apartment building, um, we brought in more investors and I got my money back and then it helped us do more and more stuff anyway. Uh, I think that one we spent, uh, we spent a hundred grand and on some training we got through Marshall Silver, which was life changing. And we also spent a week on Necker Island. So that was part of our hundred thousand dollar education. So when I, when I tell you we spent a lot of money on education over the years, we absolutely have, um, I tell my kids, I probably spent more on my education than a doctor. Uh, but I just about make just as much money as most doctors too. Plus I have a lifestyle, which is really, really sweet. So totally worth it. We, we don't regret it. And, but we had challenges. Oh my gosh. We, we sweated and we worried and, and Warren and I, uh, you know, sometimes we thought we got in our, got in over our heads, you know, and especially like when that, that lender disappeared, like that was like, oh my gosh, we would have lost well, the first time I think we had 30,000 deposit on it, so we would have lost that. And then we added another $30,000 deposit and we could have lost that 60,000 if we couldn't get a lender. But you know what? We just went in with the attitude that, you know what? We're gonna get it done regardless. It took us a while, but we got it done regardless and it worked out good in the long run. At some times we wished we had never have done it, uh, especially when we had the challenges with our partners after and all that kind of stuff uh, and all I'll say about that is whenever you're partnering and and this is the lessons that we learned on something that didn't go well which is what you always want to do is learn your lesson the lesson we learned is get a good agreement the lawyers we, we tried to get an agreement but the lawyers were giving us this like 200 page document well we didn't even have time to read it we were so busy buying we were buying sometimes three properties in a month and we were we were doing it and and uh, out of that time, we only ever lost $3,000 on deposits. We got, we had three properties under contract in one month closing and two closed before the third and then we ended up not getting the mortgage on the third. They thought we were too aggressive buying, so we did lose a $3,000 deposit. But back to the agreement, we tried to do the agreement. It was way too long. So now we have, um, I think even our long form agreements, like 14 pages, our short form agreement is is three pages now so we have a joint venture agreement 
for every single uh, property that we buy with a joint venture partner. Uh, it's easy to read, easy to understand. We recommend they get a independent legal to look at it as well in case they they don't understand it exactly we want someone else to explain it to them because of course we're a little biased we're we're doing what we're doing but uh, they don't understand so if they go to independent legal advice they can explain the downsides as optimistic entrepreneurs we only think of the upside right and uh, uh, the the other what else did we do oh the other thing that we did and this is a big learning curve um, when we, when we were working with them, they were doing all the books, they were doing all the, uh, accounting and, uh, intermingling funds. Like they had one bank account. So it was like a mess. So we learned too, that every single property that we buy, uh, even if we own it a hundred percent has its own separate bank account. Every joint venture that we have has a separate bank account where the investor can look at the account any day that they want to, uh, but we're the ones writing the checks and managing it. Uh, uh, so I, I hope that helps. Uh, I think I went on a long time. I'm just going to check here if I have any questions. And uh, okay, so what we got? Oh, hi, Amanda. Hi, Merlin. Hi, Audrey. Hi, Carm. Hi, Amanda. Again. Shandell's here. Hi, Graham. Nice to see you on. Hi, Corny. Hi, Tyler. Uh, Corny says, good morning from friendly Manitoba. Uh, hi, Anna. Or Anne, I guess you go by. Uh, good morning, Bev. Um, I have people sharing my video. Awesome. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning, Earl and Donna. How are you? Good morning, Garth. So uh, great. Does it does anyone have any questions for me? I'm not even sure what time it is here because I I can't see it on my phone and I didn't bring my iPad close enough and I, I don't have a watch. So if someone can type in there what time it is and if I should just finish up or if you have questions, please ask. Or, or if you have any stories to tell me about your first properties or or some of your fears that you had for people that uh, that are that are just getting started. Shandell tells me it takes a little while for people to um, to answer. So I'll, I'll just kind of fill you in on what, what we're going to do. Yesterday, we got to see um, my new baby nephew. Uh, he was just born in September. Oh, sweet as can be, growing like a weed. And his big sister, who's two. Uh, so we had a lot of fun with them last night. Today, we're heading off to uh, Calgary uh, to visit my other brother. They're heading back to Vegas. on. They live in Vegas in the winter. They're heading back to Vegas on Saturday. So we're going to spend uh, tonight and tomorrow night there. And then... On Saturday, we're going to head to uh, the mountains in Banff and ski for a full day and then maybe get some uh, get some uh, shopping in while we're there. Of course, the kids, even though Christmas is just over, uh, <clears throat> they, they still figure that they want to do some shopping. But they also got some money for Christmas so that we might get them to spend. There's a few things they didn't get. Uh, Graham says, do you have some conferences or seminars you'd recommend? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know what? There, we took so many conferences and so many seminars. Um, one, one of the things uh, that I'd recommend is it, it depends what type of real estate you want to buy. Uh, I know some people that want to get into wholesaling, which is basically finding properties and flipping them out to investors. So you can get to, uh, wholesale conferences. You can Google them. Um, the, 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 the conference and seminar that I like the most in Canada uh, besides my own, of course, is the Rain Group out of uh, Alberta, and it's run by Don Campbell, and uh, he's the one who's wrote the book Real Estate Investing Strategies in Canada, and, and I've been a member of his group since 2007. They are a wealth of knowledge, uh, and you can Google them. They're Rain Canada, or go to raincanada.com, I think. They're they're absolutely brilliant. They've been in it since 1980, so I, I learn a lot from them every. I'm a remote member, so I get um, CDs every month. But you can get uh, MP3s. I choose to get CDs and they keep sending them to me because I've been such a long time member because I like listening to them in my truck where I'm not distracted by my computer or anything like that. Um, 
And uh, <clears throat> so so uh, they're, they're probably one of the best groups to join. If you're in Saskatchewan, come out to our Profit in the Prairies group. We try to mimic everything that Rain does. Anything that I learn from them, I share. Uh, we, we try to make it as Saskatchewan-based as possible because we are in Saskatchewan. And, and our three-day event, uh, uh, Graham, that you have free tickets to, we are going to have a fantastic lineup of speakers and there's going to be some offers made there for different seminars and workshops for example one of the speakers I have coming in is Barry McGuire and he's a he's a guy that speaks on the rain stage all the time and he does <clears throat> agreements for sale uh, a whole workshop on agreements for sale which I think is an ideal way to be buying property right now in our market with none of your own money and he's going to do a full day workshop in April and he's going to make the offer at our three day event. So if you can get there, uh, be, be awesome for you. Um, Anne says, can you give us the joint venture agreement? Yes, I can. And you're in our uh, 90 day to 5k program. So what I'll do is I'll get Chandel to post it on there. We've got a blank, um, uh, three, three pager, I think. And then we've got a long form. So we have a short form and a long form and we'll give you access to that. Oh, and Amanda put on Rain Canada on there, www.raincanada.com. Oh, and then she also put the PREG on there, uh, P-P-R-E-I-G, and that stands for Profit in the Prairies Real Estate Investment Group. And it's a great group, and it's growing all the time, uh, and they're so willing to help each other. I, I just love that group. We just got a great, uh, great group in there. So I hope I answered all your questions. Uh, is there anything else in there? Garth was my very first mortgage broker we uh, we dealt with. So hi Garth, he's from Alberta. He got us a lot of mortgages. That was awesome. And um, what else? Oh, I seen another question here about. Oh, Drew says your lenders from the U.S. What were their conditions? You know what? Normal conditions, the same they were here. Um, the challenge they had was at the time. That's when that uh, that crisis happened in the states where all the the mortgage, um, everybody and their dog was getting a mortgage basically, and it, it just closed everything down. Uh, there were, there were no, as a matter of fact, what we were waiting for was the actual term of condition. So we didn't even get that far. They kept telling us, you'll get it tomorrow. You'll get it tomorrow. You'll get it tomorrow. And I, I can't even remember exactly why we ended up going with a lender in the U.S. I think it was because of a recommendation with a mortgage broker we were working with uh, that they thought we could get our best rate there. Um, in the long run, we ended up going to the local credit union and the rate wasn't that good. Uh, I think it was 4.5%, but you know what? We got it done and uh, when, when it was all said and done and we paid out our hard money lenders once we got the rents all up and stuff because we were able to increase the rents a lot on that building. Did we keep the original tenants? No, because they all kept thinking, well, we'll move out and we'll get some, something else. But you know what? We knew what was happening uh, with rents that and, and so we were able to move our one bedrooms up to um, I think it was a thousand or eleven hundred right away, and I and I was just talking to my one of my clients the other day, and she had her rent in there, uh, and I mean she's a stager, so she makes them look really nice. But she had her rent at, at one time twelve fifty, and now she's got it back down to eleven hundred just because of what's going on in our market, uh, higher vacancy and stuff like that. She'd rather have a good tenant and keep them than uh, than get the higher rent. So, uh, so yeah, and. Uh, and and there's different lenders out there. Don't be scared to talk to different lenders. I think someone had asked me the other day, which reminds me, I forgot to get it, give it to him. We're working with a mortgage broker out of Calgary right now uh, because there, we were starting to get uh, asked for every apartment building we were financing that we should be bringing 30 and 40% down payments. So, of course, when they start talking to us like that, we start looking around. And we've got a guy now who um, had we'd been told by a different mortgage broker that we should be looking at 30% down. And he actually thinks he might be able to get us a CMHC insured mortgage. Of course, you never know until it's actually done, uh, but we're working on it. And I'll, I'll put that out in the group here shortly shortly too. Any other questions? No? Okay, well I'm going to sign off and uh, say goodbye. <clears throat> I will be back tomorrow morning uh, with Free Coaching Friday. So, uh, well actually I, I guess I will take a few minutes um, uh, 
It was one of our purposes of doing the Facebook Live every day is to tell, remind people about our course. So um, I think most of the people that are on here are in the course. So our 90 day to 5K program that sold all last year for $5,000, it's a 12 week webinar based course. Uh, is on sale the month of December only for $1,275 uh, plus GST. And we even have a payment plan uh, for those of you that are interested. <clears throat> and the premise with the 90 Day to 5K program is in 90 days when you're done, you'll know exactly what it's going to take for you to be making $5,000 a month in passive income in three to five years. And uh, we based it on what we did. And except that uh, what, what we recommend is go straight to apartment buildings. There's apartment buildings for sale. Uh, oh, Amanda's put it on here. So the, the course, uh, 90 days to 5k.ca to order. Um, I've got a lot of people joining. The next class starts January 10th. And it'll be in the evening, 8 p.m. CST. Each webinar runs an hour to an hour and a half. You're going to learn a ton of things on there. Um, you're going to uh, do vision. You're going to describe what you want your life to look like in five years. And, uh, and then we're going to build your presentation. Where you're going to learn what it takes to talk to investors. You're going to get uh, figure out your presentation of how to present to investors. You're going to have a 30-second commercial where you introduce uh, people to what you do. And uh, we're going to show you about getting online and marketing yourself. Uh, and, and that's all part of the course. I've, I've got very, very good feedback on it. One of my students this summer... Uh, Drew, who's actually on here, I'm going to talk about him because he's just amazing. Uh, Drew's a teacher and uh, he he was off this summer, so he wanted to fast track the 90 day to 5k. So he took the course that was just recordings and I just sent him out to him as he was complete. So he'd send me his homework, I'd review it. If he was ready to go on, I would give him the next module. He completed, I believe, and Drew, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he uh, completed seven modules and he got his first two investors. So he bought uh, two duplexes with investors. He had never raised capital before. He had some of his own properties, but he'd never raised capital before. And he got two investors, uh, two houses paying $1,100 a month in cash flow. So he is pretty happy. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't even think he's finished the 90 day to 5k course because he joined our mastermind and he's going great guns. He wants to make this uh, a full-time career and he is actually working right now on a $9 million deal uh, with uh, vendor financing opportunities, uh, investor opportunities. And it, it's and of course, deals like that don't happen overnight. So he's been working on it for, I think, a month maybe two months now and <clears throat> and it'll close in uh in 2017 if everything works out right and uh so proud of him though like a nine million dollar deal and he's going to do it all with uh without any of his own money and it'll be a fantastic deal it'll totally change his life and he's been in the program since june that's the mastermind program, but it's the extension off the 90 day for people that want their hands held through stuff like this. He calls me all the time. Uh, we talk, we talk to different lenders. We talk, you know, together, uh, because there's some questions he's not sure of asking just yet or, you know, so he, he's working on it. He's doing great. I, I see great things happening for him. Uh, and, and so we're very excited for him to, to move forward. The other thing is the bonuses. Um, I keep forgetting to tell about this. We've got a three-day event uh, that's absolutely fantastic. We've done two already. This is our third year. We have speakers like Paul Martin coming in. Uh, and if you don't know Paul Martin, he's the journalist in Saskatchewan. Absolutely has great things to tell us about uh, Saskatchewan and the opportunities here. And, and he's in the know. He knows what's going on. It's It'll be the third year we've had him speak. Everybody loves him. And... Uh, like I said, uh, Barry McGuire is going to be there. He's going to talk about his agreement for sale program. We also do a Dragon's Den play there. And it's called Prairie Dragon. So if you've got a deal that you want to present, a live deal, you'll get the opportunity to do that to live investors who very well may take up that deal if it's a good deal. Warren and I got a deal on it last year. He was one of the dragons. And and uh, and we... we don't promote that as well as we should. We'll get better at it this year. But it's a great opportunity to present your deals there. And you'll network with a bunch of other people doing the same thing you want to do. So you're going to get free tickets to that. And 
I'm also uh, working on a mindset course that's going to come out this spring. I don't have an exact date, but I honestly believe that 90% of your success is going to do with your mindset. And so I really want to train people on that. And because you're my, my beta test group, you're going to get it for free. Now, if you sign up for the 90 day course uh, before or on by the 31st of the month. Um, and the reason you're getting it for free is I'm, I'm building it as, uh, as we're going through it. So you're going to help me build it. And next year I'll be selling that course for 1997 or, or just around 2000 bucks. Um, and I know it's worth it because I've been to them. I, I, I teach it a lot in my courses. We actually just finished module four in the last group that started and it was all about mindset. It was about an hour and a half long, but uh, there's some good homework to go in that. And, uh, and it makes all the difference if your mindset's right. Because, you know, um, you have to have the right mindset and you have to invest in yourself, which is what you're doing by joining the 90-day program and then the mastermind. Uh, because if you don't invest in yourself, how can you expect investors to invest with you? You know, that, that's the biggest key. And one of my uh, students actually said this the other day on a video. If you get a chance to watch it, Drew and, uh, or not Drew, Tyler Hassman and Bailey Moseman, they started with me too. It was May or June. They just took possession of their first apartment building, 12 unit apartment building, on December 1st. They are beyond excited. And one of the things that they said at the end of their video, which was so powerful because that those words did not come out of my mouth, it came out of theirs, you have to invest in yourself if you're going to get investors to invest with you. So remember that when you're when you're deciding whether you're going to join the course or not. Um, the 75% off is until December 31st, and these bonuses that I'm offering go with it. Uh, the the other one on top of that is our marketing team, which is again, um, we uh, took a big step two years ago and hired a marketing team, or a year and a half, I guess. And it's been the best thing that we've ever done. Uh, they do so much stuff behind the scenes that you guys don't see. Uh, they set up, uh, when I do my Facebook Lives, they set it up. They send out all the notices. They get people on. They're, they're on here. Amanda and Shandell are on here uh, entering this stuff in here because I can't enter it as I'm talking. Um, and, and they remind me of stuff if I forget, which is just so wonderful. So free brand new 12 week mindset course. Oh, and then also you get lifetime access to the 90 day course and updates. And I'm always updating it. Every time I take a new course or learn something new, or if things change in the market, I'm adding it into my program. So it's a continual, continuously updated. I believe we've got like 68 people in that group now. Uh, and I only just started it in January. So that shows you how many people are, are enrolled. Um, and uh, lifetime access, the free three-day event, um, and this marketing course. So this marketing course is Jason and Chandel sell this four week marketing course for $7.95 and you're going to get it for free. And the reason is, is we know that you need to start marketing to do everything uh, as effectively. Uh, some of my students are already doing videos, which I absolutely love. Um, Rob Parkman, who you guys have seen on here, I seen his first video. He actually did it in early December, but I, I didn't tag me on it. So I didn't get to see it till yesterday. So good. Um, you're going to learn about finding the money. There's a whole spreadsheet that you get about finding the money. And it's very, very powerful exercise. I think Rob's found like $170 million, like just amazing. So give yourself a gift this year and change your life. You know, it, real estate changed our lives. We love our lifestyle. I love sharing this. You know, a single mom who who lived on minimum wage, low income housing, subsidized daycare to where we are today, multimillionaires. Um, such a lifestyle change. And and it, I'm just so thrilled to be able to offer this to you. Uh, it, I know it's life changing. We've seen it change lives right in the group. Uh, spend the twelve seventy five. It's absolutely worth it. And uh, we'll see on the, we'll see on, in on January tenth when the next course starts. Remember, it's uh, the the price is going up next year again. I'm not sure if I'll put it back to five thousand. It depends. I have a rule. I, one of the reasons I had it at a high price was if people pay more, they commit more. Not necessarily to me, but to themselves. When they say, if I'm paying five grand for this, 
I am going to get every ounce of value out of it. I'm going to show up. I'm going to do my homework uh, and I'm going to do something with this. $12.75, I wonder sometimes about the commitment level. So if, if I don't get commitments, if I don't see success stories coming out of this, I'm changing it because I would rather have 10 success stories than uh, 50 people who do nothing. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm looking for success stories as well. I'm uh, writing a new book this year and it's going to be all about the success stories of my students. I want you to be one of them. Bye for now.